What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. This is Travis here. Today we're going to be doing my weekly rambling video. Now if you're new to this content, this is where I give you a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time, uh, talk about the ups and downs, some updates, and just kind of give you some insight on what I'm thinking about. And uh, you guys like this content, so we're going to continue to do it. Now in this video, I'm going to probably piss off a couple people and I, I almost want to apologize now, but I'm, I'm just not going to. Uh, there's some stuff that needs to be said about our reefing community here on YouTube and it just kind of needs to be said. If uh, something comes of it and changes, if it doesn't, it doesn't. It is what it is. Uh, I'm also going to give you guys an update on Reef of Palooza, some of the things I have in mind for that show in June, as well as uh, show you guys the garden downstairs and upstairs and kind of um, kind of how I've been picking out on the garden already. And uh, yeah, so we're going to cover all that. So let's go and get started. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the reefing community here on YouTube. Uh, I've only been here for about two and a half years, and it has changed drastically since I've started. A uh, little insight on kind of how it was when I started. Uh, you had to make content. You had to edit that content, upload it. And if people liked it, they stayed and subscribed. If they didn't, you know, your watch time wasn't that great, and you just didn't get noticed on YouTube. It is what it is. Uh, now it's live streams this, live streams that. And I will admit, live streams are great uh, for those people who don't want to sit down and, and edit content. It's it's good. It's an easy way to get your name out there and stuff like that. So I don't hate people for doing it, but it definitely has changed how information gets uh, across to people and how misinformation can be spread very quickly. And, uh, and it also contributes to kind of the ego factor or the star mentality that some people get here on the community. And it's kind of funny um, of how people, how their minds change. You know, somebody starts off very humble with one subscriber and then they'll get like two or 300 and they start thinking, oh shit, I'm starting to be something. And then, the, you know, then they get up to around 3000 and they're like, whoa, man, now, now my head is really big. And uh, it's just, it's interesting to see how their personalities change over the years because there's people I've talked to for several years uh, in general and then I came over to YouTube and then I met more people on YouTube on top of that and just kind of seeing the difference between people and how they changed over time based on subscriber count. And uh, you guys know that I've been pretty consistent from the beginning. Uh, the only thing that's really changed my channel is I don't necessarily do as much beginner guy stuff that I want want to. and. Uh, I, you know, I apologize. That's something I really want to start doing more of. I just kind of took over with projects and builds. And, you know, there's only so many hours a day that you can put content in when you have uh, kids at home as well, when you're trying to, you know, take care of all that stuff and be a dad and have a family and, and run a business and then run YouTube on top of it. Sometimes, sometimes something has to take a back seat. And unfortunately, YouTube is the first thing that takes a back seat uh, when it comes to the rest of my life. It's just kind of how it is. But uh, regardless, uh, it's just interested, interesting to see how people have changed when when YouTube goes to their head, how how um, everybody wants to be or specific people. I won't put any names out there, but people want to be superstars. They want to get noticed at frag swaps. I get it. But I feel that uh, when you come into this community and you present content, you need to have a certain motivation. Uh, for me, it's always been I want to uh, share my content with you share that part of my life with you guys and also uh, show you what I know that works and give you the best information that I know with uh, you know either with documentation proof in the comment section or with proof of it working visually through the video so I've always been that way and it's it's never going to change because it's worked so far so why change it but I feel that um, <clears throat> people come in here and they throw content out just for the sake of trying to trying to be something not so much helping other people. It's more or less, more or less this whole Me Too movement that's kind of, kind of taken over the United States. It's the Me Too. It's the Me Too. Everything's about me and what I can do for myself and kind of how I can benefit from this. It's never anybody else, and at least I'm not noticing that. It's never about helping anybody else. And I'm not pointing out, I'm not saying everybody who makes YouTube videos in our community is doing this, but there are certain people that are. And unfortunately, those people get underneath my radar via uh, you know, somebody sends me a link or, or I've just known you for a while and I've realized that you're starting to change and, and I'm just going to bring it up. And, um, and it's just kind of how it is. And this is, this has been a thought that I've had on my mind for the last uh, few weeks now. And it, it's just kind of, I wish our community would go back to the way it was where you sat down and you made content and people liked it. You got seen, your watch time was up. It means you got spread through YouTube. You got, sh you know, you were shared and people enjoyed your stuff and you continue to grow. Now it's all about how famous can I get on a live stream? How, how can I go show off and, and get kudos and subscribers from a live stream and, and give misinformation? That's all that it's about. If I really want to be lazy, I'll just run live streams every day like everybody else. I mean, I can do that. I mean, I have no problem. I can run live streams every day and just sit here and talk out my ass if that's what it, if that's what it takes, right? But no, that's not what I enjoy, so I'm just saying it's that easy. But I just... Uh, 
I just I'm disappointed on kind of how things have progressed and and how everybody wants to everybody wants to be something but never never wants to put the effort into doing it and um it's a shame it is what it is so i'm an, enough about that oh yeah for whoever i'm not going to say any names but this pisses me off too you know the banner on the front of all my thumbnails to the left hand side that has my name and the color theme and all that kind of stuff that i started i don't know like a year ago uh for the joker out there using my banner but just changing the letters to whatever name your youtube channel is you're an asshole i just want to put that out there okay don't try to gain off of my success and my subscribers because what happens is in the related videos your banner will show up next to mine and they'll misclick and watch your content or go to your channel and you'll get a view out of it based on the fact that it has the same look. So just little stuff like that. Come on, guys. Just make your own effort. And, uh, you know, why do you think I've changed my intro a couple times? Because people keep using it. Um, so now i got to pay even more money to have people do more unique intros so I don't have to deal with that shit anymore. Anyways, I'm done talking about it. I'm going to move on to something else. All right, so the next thing I want to cover here is the garden downstairs. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. I've started out some new plants. I started some carrots, started some California peppers. Um, I went ahead and uh, started some radishes a couple weeks ago, and they're already doing quite well. Um, I have those downstairs here, as well as uh, my new kind of, I guess it's a kind of a salad. It's called a sweet salad mix. It doesn't taste sweet, but I mean, it's good. I trimmed it up. It's actually really small. It was probably three times the size of it yesterday, and I trimmed it up and uh, made a few salads out of it. It was pretty good. And um one thing I realized is when I'm cutting lettuce and stuff, I basically got to cut what I'm going to eat then and not put it in the refrigerator, or put it in a Ziploc bag or anything like that because it just doesn't doesn't hold over very well. So whatever they're doing in mass production to allow lettuce to stay lettucey, is that, is that even a damn word? Whatever. I don't know what they're doing, but I basically got to cut what I want to eat and then just kind of leave the rest to grow. But yeah, so down here we have also um, three green bean plants. So my plan is I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more of these bigger uh, pots here and put the carrots in there and then also uh, maybe put the peppers in there or something I haven't really decided yet but I also have another type of lettuce that I want to try out which is the uh, uh, black seed lettuce here which is one of those you can kind of uh, cut and eat as you go and it just continues to grow back so that's the kind of lettuce that I like to grow now uh, the lighting here is about 1200 watts it's the 5k LEDs uh, and I built this fixture uh, from Home Depot it was relatively cheap it wasn't that much money I think the bulbs the most of the bulbs actually believe it or not came from my 60 gallon uh, planted tank from a while back which I miss that tank so much I really miss a planted tank I can't I'm just so sick of looking at blue salt water all the time I'm just ready to for a planted tank so uh, be ready for that build that's probably going to happen uh, within the next few months here in the fish room I got room next to my desk I'm going to make something happen one way or another and uh, back on topic. So anyways, those bulbs came from that planted build. So most of those bulbs I already had. And they're the 5K uh, LEDs from Home Depot. And I think you can get a two-pack for like $18. And they're 90 watts with 120 watt one, something like that. And uh, they work great for growing plants downstairs. Um, and for those of you who keep asking me if I'm going to make a planting channel, uh, probably not. I ain't got time for that shit. I, I might do something like talk about this consistently you know consistently during the rambling videos i can't even speak english either and then uh i might do that but to designate a whole nother channel with that yeah i don't know probably not probably not gonna happen um so upstairs here um we're gonna move on to that uh basically on the right hand side when you come out to the deck i have uh, radishes that have just started coming up i have swiss chard in two rows that will be coming up i just planted that stuff a couple days ago radishes always come up pretty quickly i think it's like three or four days and then I have um, a different, like a, a reddish romaine lettuce that's growing. And I have that in two spots. I have it here and then in the other planter. And then right here is that salad mix that I have growing downstairs. So I have it also growing up here, which I will probably trim in a few days to, uh, you know, let the rest of it grow. And then we move down to the pots. We have uh, two different types of cherry tomatoes. I probably should have kept the little, uh, the little identification tag. But uh, yeah, I don't remember what kind they are. But they're the kind I like to eat. I don't know if that counts. Anyways. Uh, we have two different types of cherry tomatoes, so four plants there. And um, I did a ton of research on cherry tomatoes and kind of uh, the diseases they get, how to deal with them, and just cherry t tomato plants that are a pain in the ass in general to grow. But, I mean, it's, it is the most popular plant that people grow, and it actually uh, you know tastes pretty awesome. So uh, moving over here, uh, we have the uh, cucumber plants, which will grow up onto the back deck and then kind of spread out, and then their fruit will produce back there. So that's pretty cool. And then in the middle, we have the green bean plants that I have downstairs. So all that stuff will stay kind of centralized in that uh, barrel. And then moving over to uh, the left side a little bit more, we have uh, squash, which again will grow up and uh, vine out and uh, kind of be like the cucumbers. 
and I wanted to spread those out so the hopes that they didn't kind of come together so quickly, but I, I anticipate them growing together up on the railing. And then uh, moving over here, we have, uh, it's kind of like a, a snap pea kind of green bean, and it's just something that I, I started and think it was going to grow into anything, and obviously it's turned into something. And uh, yeah, so it just started flowering up, so we should be expecting some beans here soon. There's been a lot of bees out here, um, and uh, I was kind of figure out, like, where are all these damn bees coming from? And then I noticed that the the tomatoes are blooming and all that kind of stuff so it's pretty cool and then over here i just have two random cherry tomato plants that i had started and again didn't think they were going to become anything and here they are uh, starting to bloom up so that's cool um if you guys notice i really like cherry tomatoes i do not like regular tomatoes the the inside texture of a regular tomato makes me want to throw up the it's just a snotty slimy disgusting texture but i'll eat a cherry tomato as long as it doesn't have too much uh basically too much liquid on the inside and it's kind of got a good snap to it um, and that's something that I was reading up on as well is basically when I go to water these as they're producing fruit or starting to ripen up I got to kind of cut my watering in half allowing that berry or that fruit or better at the tomato to um, kind of have a less water content giving you that better tomato so that's it's a good tip I'm glad that I figured that out um, right before they start uh, starting to produce so anyways guys that's about it for the garden so let's go ahead and move back downstairs to the 300 gallon all right, so the 300 gallon is doing very well. Um, I have a little bit more lighting over the tank, and I will do a video out soon um, on the extra lighting over a particular section. So each one of my sections on my reef tank, so there's four sections uh, given four rocks, and there's going to be two XR15s per light uh, section there. And basically, I'm going to do a par reading to kind of see uh, how good... Uh, this light spectrum is or how much par I'm getting off of two radions because it seems really bright right now and uh, it's definitely a pretty big difference now the coral and everything's growing fine I did add some new acros in there that were uh, darker from a pre from other owners tanks so uh, usually when I put acros in here they go through a little phase they lighten up and then their color comes up and um, one thing I'll show you guys about this tank in a later video is actually how I fragscape it's really unique with the two uh, middle structures because the, the middle structures actually can rotate any direction I want. I can move them anywhere I want in the tank. And I can basically, if I want to put a frag on the back of, a, of this uh, rockscape, I can just simply rotate it around, put the frag in, and then rotate it back. It's really cool. I'll show you guys that. And uh, it's just, it's some little thing like that. This is the first time I had an aquascape that I can just move around however I want, which is really good. So when everything starts growing in, if, say, I don't know, the bird's nest or something just starts shading out another coral, I can simply move that rock structure so it no longer shades out that coral. So it's just... It's a really new concept that I have that I want to continue to do. And uh, I don't know, it's pretty awesome because aquascaping or better yet, fragscaping this 300. I use a grabber for like 90% of the stuff I put on there, but it's a huge pain in the ass with a 31 inch tall tank. So I'll probably never get another 31 inch, in, inch tall tank. I'd rather be more length, uh, like maybe a 10 foot or 12 foot tank being only 20, you know, 5, 26, 28 inches tall, just kind of saving me from having to stick my face in the tank to actually even get nearly close to the, you know, halfway down the tank. So, uh, but yeah, the 300 gallon is doing pretty awesome. I'm uh, about 9.5 DKH. I finally, uh, instead of making adjustments with two part to get it where I wanted to, I just slowly, uh, just kind of increased it on the calcium reactor and just let it took, let it take its time. So I'm at 9.5 DKH. I've been sitting at that for quite some time now. And now the growth is starting to happen. The coloration is getting better. It's officially been one month and four days since, or five days since I've took the GFO completely off the system. And the macroalgae is nice, lush, and green. It's coming back. Um, the coloration and polyp extension is much better in the tank. And uh, I'm also feeding a lot more than I usually did. And, uh, yeah, I also cleaned the back glass. I'll have that video out soon as well. Uh, I took the time and did a big, big water change on this tank, cleaned the back glass. I also went out and sent I went and sent uh, the Triton Method vials out the other day. So um, we'll get another water test and kind of see how the tank is doing and make uh, whatever adjustments we need to. But uh, yeah, as for dosing, it's just uh, Acropower, and um, I do the Strontium, and then basically that's it. I let the Calcium Reactor take care of everything else, and I have Reef Plus in my food, so that's kind of how I'm dosing the tank as well as feeding the fish, so it kind of works out. And uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later in another video. And uh, yeah, the tank is doing very well now that the GFO is off, and I've kind of got my nutrients back up. And uh, it's just, the tank was still new. I mean, the rock was cured even though there was beneficial bacteria on the rock there still was you know the tank has to go through a little bit of a process before things start picking up and now that i'm getting uh you know the core the acropora growth really what it did is it it kind of encrusted for the longest time and now it's finally starting to go up which is kind of normal it just was 
upsetting to a point where I'm like, well, this time on my six months on my uh, 125, I had a ton of growth and a ton of coral going on. And I just have to realize I'm going with different corals. It's a whole whole nother tank. It's a different setup. And, um, you know, I'm using new rock and not, you know, eight, 10 year old rock that I had from somebody before and it used some of the rock that I had for two years. So it's uh, it's a different situation. I just have to take that into consideration when I start judging myself on my own performance. But uh, yeah, this tank, I can't wait to see what it looks like in a couple of years, uh, just with uh, the sheer amount of coral that I have in there now. And I just added seven frags yesterday and it doesn't look like I added anything. So uh, got to get more coral. This is kind of where I'm at. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let's move on to the 30 gallon real quick. Um, the new method that I started the other day, everything seems to be fine. I did do a pretty big water change on this tank and, uh, yeah, it's working out great. We have the clownfish in there as well as the antheus and, uh, everybody's happy. I'm probably going to put a couple more fish in here just to have some more movement and, uh, yeah, should be good to go. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about regarding the fish room is the quarantine setup. Now we have the two tangs on the top. We have the uh, flame fin and the scopus tang, which have been in quarantine since the 25th. Then I went ahead and picked up uh, Scott at Roscoe's Reef, his powder blue. He's in quarantine. I also have a bunch of clownfish, and I just got two more um, black and white Ocellaris clownfish the other day or yesterday. Um, for somebody wanted to trade them for coral, they didn't have a home for them, so I took them in. Now <clears throat> I'm going to do something a little bit differently uh, with my clownfish, and I've I've had mo I've had several. Uh, clownfish in the past, but I've never had this many. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, introducing not only those three tangs on the 25th or 26th of this month, but I'm also going to be taking two uh, yellow and white Ocellaris clowns and then those two black and whites and introducing those to my 300, which currently has a pair of black and white Ocellaris already in there. Now the tank is very big. Uh, I don't foresee any real issues. Now, what I will be doing is relocating my plate coral over to the right side of the tank uh, because uh, the black and white, white Ocellaris that I just got are known for hosting that type of coral and uh, have hosted frog spawn and stuff in their other tanks. So they're going to be hosting something uh, relatively quickly, or at least I hope they do, um, based on their uh, their past anyways. And uh, so we're going to have six clownfish in there, and we'll see how the tank does. It won't be too difficult to remove clownfish. I can catch my guys pretty quickly during feeding time because they're just like up at the surface of water and don't even see a giant net coming through. So worst case scenario, if there's some unnecessary aggression with the clownfish, I'll go ahead and I'll remove um, a pair of them or whatever the problem is or causing the problem, I will remove them. Now I'm going to just monitor just the normal how they treat each other, but I'm not going to make any uh, major changes unless somebody is, you know, almost going to die or at least getting picked on too much. That's when I'll make some changes. But this would be a good time to see how three sets of clownfish do in a 300 gallon tank, given their own areas, as well as how this powder blue does, knowing that now that I know that he has killed fish in his past and he's very aggressive. And we'll kind of see how everybody does when they're introduced to the 300. And what's good is I'm going to be adding all three of those tanks at the same time, which will cut down on the aggression. And also adding four uh, clowns at the same time will also help uh, with the introduction. So again, stay tuned for that. We'll have that video at the end of the month once I get them into the tank. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I have one more thing I want to mention before I let you go, and that is Reef of Palooza. I will definitely be there uh, next month. I'm looking forward to the show. I'm looking forward to meeting all you guys. And uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Now, regarding that show, I'll give you all the information about where I'll be in the booth and all that kind of stuff when we get closer to the show. God forbid something changes and I give misinformation. Uh, I don't want to do that. So uh, one thing I will be putting a video out soon on is uh, my T-shirt. So the, basically how this is going to work is if you have purchased one of my shirts or you purchase any shirt from this point forward and you wear it to the show, I'll give you two free pieces of coral for wearing that shirt around the show. And um, I feel that that's... A great way to say thank you for supporting the channel and when you buy one of my t-shirts granted you're spending $23 but only $7 of that t-shirt actually goes towards the reef tank for veterans program so I'm going to be giving you 30 to $60 worth of free coral for technically getting the $7 for that program but ultimately uh, not getting anything because I'm not using that money for the business or for myself and it is simply just a thank you for supporting the program and supporting the channel. So um, I will be adding a bunch of new shirts. I'm going to try some funny ones. Maybe like uh, I bought this shirt for a sub or I bought this shirt for free corals. You know, something funny. You know, if you guys want to want to wear that kind of stuff, it's all personally de personality dependent. But uh, there goes my phone. I'm not even editing this out. I'm not even going to do it. Anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. And uh, I'll see you next week. All right. Peace. <laughs>